system views, and I'm picking number two, which is the brain. And you have the sleeping brain uh, slides, and most of the uh, slides that I have on there um, have a particular view where you're looking at this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this angle just so that it kind of mirrors, or not necessarily mirrors, but actually is more identical to things, the, the perspective that you're used to. What's really cool about this app is that you can, you know, rotate and look at it in a 3D form, which is something that you would really only get in a human cadaver lab. Um, that's something that uh, you really can't see on a 2D picture. But what's really cool is that you can actually dissect out parts that you don't want to see um, <clears throat> that might be in the way of your view. So I'm going to actually blow this up and show you that you can actually get rid of the vasculature that are in the way of being able to visualize the different parts of the brain. Another thing that we're going to get rid of are the this, uh, this pieces of the skull, just because they're in the way of where we wanna go. So we're just gonna actually pull out a bunch of vasculature here, just so that we can kind of see. You gotta be really specific though, because um, if you slip a little bit, it's gonna actually take out uh, a major structure. So you have to you know, really blow it up and make sure that you're clicking, uh, selecting the right sort of uh, thing that you want to to get rid of. So I'm just going to get rid of a few things here. And as you're as you're getting rid of it, you'll notice that you can actually it's identifying it as it's going to show you what you're getting rid of. Um, so that's another cool feature. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. So I'm actually going to get rid of this left hemisphere completely because I want to be able to see um, this the brain stem below. So I'm going to get rid of this whole hemisphere. And then here, um, I'm, I just want to show you guys, because it, it's a really neat uh, feature, is instead of dissecting, you can select on multi-select, and it'll actually uh, identify the structures that you, that you click on. So if I wanted to look at the left cerebellum, I would click on that. It's, this is a particular, the, the actual posterior lobe um, and the anterior lobe of the cerebellum. And so you can see here, these are just parts of the left um, cerebellum. And so what's really neat is that it gives you a perspective that, you know, you can kind of see what's what's going on here. So I want to get rid of a couple of these vertebrae just because it's going to be a little bit easier to see, again, uh, the brain structure that we're interested in here. So um, I'm going to get rid of the left uh, cerebellum just because it's going to be easier to see um, the uh, brain uh, stem. And that's what we're really interested in here. So. Um, if you go on multi-select and you're looking for the pawns, they're right here. Um, and so you can see this is the left pawns. And then you can actually see if you rotate through that, that you have a left and a right pawn. So you can kind of see where that actually is located there. And the structures that we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the REM on and REM off cells. Uh, but what's really important is that you understand where they're physically located. Um, and this is really difficult to do um, because it's not necessarily, they're not like structures. Um, the cells are located um, at different points. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where you have to kind of... Um, you have to kind of blow things up and move things around to be able to see where exactly they're located. So I'm going to show you on here um, where the REM on cells are located. So the REM on cells are located um, on the side of the pawns. So really, um, the best way to uh, to kind of visualize this is that they are. Um, I'm going to actually do a screenshot of this. And this is how I would suggest that you also do this. Um, you can actually uh, draw on the screenshot. You can also draw on the app, but I find that it's easier for me to draw on a screenshot. That way, I can actually get. Um, uh, I can go back and keep keep working on it. So one of the particular places that the Remon cells are located um, is right about here, which is the sides of the ponds. And so there are multiple places, um, sort of uh, sections where we see uh, clusterings of the Remon cells. And so, um, you know, as you move down the ponds, we see sort of a, 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 uh, some structure of a uh, set of Remon cells kind of um, place there. And what they're going to do is they're going to communicate um, throughout 
that particular area. And it actually extends even further past the ponds, but the majority of those REM um, on cells are going to be located about here and here at the side of the ponds. And so that's where we see the, the concentration. Um, and what's really important about the REM on cells is that um, they uh, they communicate with different areas of the brain, like the medulla, medulla and the hypothalamus. Um, and it uses uh, neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, glutamate, and glycine, uh, which are important for REM sleep. We also see that it uses different neurotransmitters and different systems to be able to actually um, start the process of, um, of, of muscle paralysis. And so um, it's really important for you not to use your muscles during um during REM sleep because we're dreaming and we don't want to sort of, you know, actually act out those particular dreams. And so when you, when REM on cells are activated, they're recruiting um, different systems to be able to initiate the process of paralysis of the muscles. And so um, we see that the REM on cells specifically are able to stimulate parts of the medulla, and they use glycine to prevent activation of the nerves that actually cause muscles to, to, to contract. So it's a really important area um, that we see being used during REM sleep. So that's a, an example of using the app to be able to identify um, the REM on cells. And I'm actually going to save um, this picture. Now, another important uh, 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 structure that, that we really need to talk about um, it contains uh, the uh, REM off cells. So we have two particular areas that the REM on uh, that the REM off cells are concentrated in. Okay, and so what this is going to require is me to show you. We're going to actually have to dissect out um, this pons to really see it. So there's a couple of, of things that you guys should should know, and that is that um, in the, uh, the uh, ascending reticular activating system, we see that it contains um, different uh, areas of the brain that are really important to waking and to, um, to sleeping. And so one of those particular areas um, is the uh, reticular formation. Now, the reticular formation um, actually is not really like a structure. It's, it's column. It's a, it's a structure, but it's not one that you can easily see, um, you know, just on the outside of the, of the brain. It's actually three sets of columns that go in, uh, that make up internally the brainstem. It almost runs all the way through the brainstem. Um, and in here you can kind of see where that sort of cut is, um, where they would actually be, um, I'm going to actually use this pointer here. You can actually see in here where it would be three separate columns moving through the brainstem. And the middle one contains a nuclei called the raphe nuclei. And that's a really important structure to this system. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that with the REM off cells. So, um, so you know, just a kind of a precursor there. So what I'm going to do is actually dissect out this pons. Um, here in this part of the brainstem. And what I want to bring your attention to is this right here, which is the fourth, the fourth ventricle. I'm going to actually dissect this out too. So it gets out of the way here. And you, and you. Okay. You know what? Take you too. This vasculature is very, very hard to get out sometimes. Okay. So if you see here, we have the, uh, the fourth, the fourth ventricle. So this right here contains, um, you know, it, it's a, uh, it's a ventricle system. So it contains cerebral spinal fluid and it's important for, uh, several different features in the brain, providing cushion, um, allowing, you know, circulation, taking out weights during sleep, things like that. So it's part of the, it's part of the system. So what's really interesting, and I'm going to, um, actually take a screenshot of this so that we can kind of see this. Um, what's really interesting about the REM off cells is that they're located in the locus cerulis um, and the uh, in the raphe. So one particular structure that I want to uh, kind of bring your attention to is, and we're going to use the red one here, okay, is this fourth ventricle. So if um, you look here, this is what we call the floor, okay, of the fourth ventricle. This is the floor. And the um, locus cerulis is located at, laterally to the floor of the uh, fourth ventricle. So 
the locus cirillus is really located, um, I would say, about, about here, sort of in the upper quadrant. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's lateral to the floor of the fourth ventricle. And so this is where we're seeing some REM off cells concentrated here. And when they're in the, the, the concentrated in the locus cirrhosis, they're going to use norepinephrine to work. And then when they are on, uh, around the RAFE, they're going to use serotonin. So when they're, when they're in the locus cirrhosis, okay, they're going to use norepinephrine. And then when they're on uh, in the RAFE nucleus, they're going to use um, serotonin. And so what's really important about um, this particular uh, area, and so we could say that the RAFE uh, nucleus really is kind of mid, kind of going up this line here. It's the, really the center of the brainstem. Um, it's not really like a structure on the outside. It's it's going up through that that sort of medial um, tract of the reticular formation. Um, so what's really important here about these these different structures 